and boom. Okay, so let's talk a little bit of a, more about, we discussed on the last session, defining the lead. And then we've also, there's a second part to, let's just talk about the buyer's journey. There's also the, the milestones. So there's the, and, the, and the, the definition of the lead should be determined by the milestones that either A, we have achieved with that client or that that client has achieved in, their, in the process. So I've really been thinking through what are the milestones and so if I asked all three, all three of you that are here today with me, okay, if what is the milestones that would have to be achieved for a buyer to be 100% ready to make an offer with you right now? What are the milestones that you would have had to have achieved with them? Let me show you my list for the sake of speed. And I'm gonna share my screen and boom. Boom, and it's going to be nothing, and then you're going to see this. So here's the kind of milestones <laughs> that I started thinking about. If you're ready to buy now, I can make this a little bigger, okay? If you're ready to buy now, I know price point, naturally. I know location. I have you probably set up on a general save search, maybe at first, and then... I get a little bit more specific in the lifestyle of what you want. Then I get you on a custom save search, right? By the way, I'm, I'm also thinking this through for like uh, an internet lead, right? These would be all the steps in an internet lead. So if, if you had a buyer consultation from the get-go, you would hit all of these things in one shot. But if I got you a Facebook lead, meaning that they barely have any interest, these would be the steps that would get you there, okay? So we understand their lifestyle and we really customize their save search. That would be a huge milestone. We understand their reason why, which is really the deep motivation, right? If you guys watched that video that I did with um, uh, Eric Lambert yesterday on, you know, he has a 17% conversion rate right now with Zillow leads, right? His, and one of, the thing, one of the things he talked about was he does a little bit of a motivational reason why in his buyer consultation, it's very powerful. Make sure you guys watch that video from yesterday, okay? And that's the Eric Lambert one. We would understand their time frame, and there would be no conditions that would stop them from buying now. But a lot of times there is a condition. I've got my leases up in 90 days from now, right? Or uh, whatever, my, you know, the school is out. Once the school is out, we'll do it, right? Whatever. Then there's an objection. We're scared of the coronavirus. That's an objection. A condition is, you know, I can't, I'm not pre approved. I can't afford it. That's a condition, it's not an objection. Okay, so we would know, we would know time frame, and they'd be and they'd be like, I am ready. We would have a you know approval from a respected loan officer, meaning they are fully approved or even underwritten, right? And they've hired me as their agent. You see that these are like this is basically kind of you know the LP Mama script. LP mama script, location, price point, motivation, agent, mortgage, appointment, right? That's the, the acronym for LP mama. So when I look at, you know, as we, as we jump into our buyer leads today or any buyer lead follow-up, what I want you to think about is you get, I want you to go, okay, what do I know? And then what do I not know? And so now when we have these definitions, it gives us the clear next action step. Because if I'm like, oh, well, what do I know about this, this lead? I've got them on a, a save search. They're looking at properties for sale in, and they're looking in this price range and they sent me price range, but I don't know. And I know it's three bedroom, two bath, but I don't really know what else do I know? Well, I don't know time frame. I don't know why. 
I don't know if they have, you know, been financially pre-approved yet. And I don't know if they're going to hire me to be their agent. And until I, and so now, okay, well, what's the next step? I might now just send them a text. I might call them. They didn't answer. So then I just sent them a text. Hey, I just was curious. What is the perf, you know, when is the ideal time frame for you guys to secure this next home? That would be my next text message to that lead. I might create an email that says, you know, hey, Adrian, and I'm, you know, I've been seeing you looking at lots of great properties in Spring Valley. I know this, that, and the other, but you know what I don't know is I don't know when is the ideal time frame for you to find this next perfect home. Would lo you know, love to find out. All the best. Stay safe. Send. Because that's just the, the next step in the process. Now, a lot of people, unfortunately, try and get all, they try and, you know, they try and get, eat the whole elephant in one shot, sometimes in a text or an email. Don't do that. Okay. So if we're texting and emailing, our number one goal is just to get a response. That's it. Once we can get the response, then we can follow it up with a phone call and create the conversation. Once we get them into a conversation, then you got to balance out. Am I going to eat the whole elephant in the conversation or should I book an appointment to go into a much more in-depth conversation about all of the rest of these things? Okay. So you have to use your best judgment in, in, inside of some of those moments. Okay. So it was very helpful yesterday when I got on the phone with a high driver buyer and I started kind of going through some of this stuff. And then when I got off the phone with her, I could go back and I could reflect, what did I not know? What did I not do? And then I was able to create my action plan of what my next steps were with that buyer lead. She was kind of a driver, so she was kind of short with me, yet she was giving me enough openness to work with me. And so that was all I needed. And then now I've taken her to the next step, which is the appointment. Okay. So... What is your definition of a lead? And then if I were to go into your CRM, would I, would it, would it reflect any of this? Could I, what could I say, show me all of your ready to buy now leads. And would there be a, uh, uh, in the notes, would it, would there be some reflection of the LP mama or these categories? Okay. So one of the reasons why I like what the GGMS guys have been doing is because they not only created these milestones, they, they teach you how to, to put it in the right uh, way in your CRM. And then they also built filter systems so that your CRM can actually tell you what, what lead has what things and what the next step is. That's what I like about it, right? Okay. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. We can also, you know, maybe on our next uh, session, let's talk a little bit about the seller side and kind of what is the, the steps to a seller who is now ready to list their property and sign a contract with you. Okay. But I'm going to shut up and let's get on with some of our lead follow-up. And uh, I have that document in the Google drive for you guys. So I'll label it and I'll, it'll, I'll save it underneath the buyers. And so you guys can have access to that later. Cool. All right, let's rock and roll. Let's get on.